Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filla podcast. I'm here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, it's March and what better way to kick March <laughs> off than with a transfer room of episode, mate. How are you doing? I'm very good, mate. Very good. It seems like we can't leave these alone. We can't. Uh, they keep, they keep, just when you think, just when you think the transfer room of are done until we, we get back underway in, in the summer, these that these come up every now and again um and this one you know it i think it takes for us to talk about a transfer in march it has to be a certain caliber of player doesn't it 100 like, you know it, uh, there, there's a lot of times i'll be like nah it's probably not worth doing it like but this one is like okay yeah we we have to talk about this one mate we do but before we get into this uh exciting transfer rumor mill first of all guys we have a message from today's video sponsors have you ever wanted an app that collates all the scores and news from your favourite teams in the whole of Europe, Dan. Have you ever wanted that? It's it's a constant need of mine, mate, because there's always news. That's the thing, is that we we love this game. We love the industry of football because it's ever-changing, mate, and you need a place to keep up with it all. And we have that place exactly for you guys. It's one football. Guys, this app is genuinely, it's life-changing. It's great because I actually already, I, I use it. Um, so it's like it's great because it's where I pull the stats from for the podcast so it's like there's also there's all that new stuff as well but you you can track all of the players stats from like across Europe for all the different leagues for continental football as well uh, it's, it's it's a dream it's a dream and the best part mate is it's free it's free and guys it would help support the channel massively if you check that one football using the link in the description down below we promise you guys won't be disappointed Guys, if you haven't already, please check out OneFootball. It is an app that Dan and I honestly use on a day-to-day basis. It really helps us inform the podcasts um, and it helps keep the lights on over here um, and over there where Dan is. Um, But yeah, if you guys haven't, we'd really appreciate if you check it out using the link in the description. But Dan, it's here. You guys have seen it in the title already. Frank Kessier to Aston Villa and this is something that's it, it's come out of Italy from Calcio Mercato. Fabrizio Romano's picked it up. Um, the Birmingham Mail have also got on it, which probably means that it isn't happening if we're being honest. Um, but nevertheless, it's the profile of player that gets the Villa Villa boys excited and wanting to inform you guys all about Kessier. Now, if you guys watch AFCON, uh, don't judge Frank based off AFCON because he didn't have a brilliant time. I think he had a kind of mid-tournament crisis as well and shaved his head bald, um, which was something that just completely threw me off guard when I was watching the tournament. But Frank's a really exciting one, Dan, because he, he's been at Milan for quite a while now and it has felt like for the longest time. You know, he's 25 years old with the way he's performing and at the level of which AC Milan just aren't able to compete at anymore. It's always felt like Frank has been destined for a move to, I don't want to say a bigger club because AC Milan are, are gargantuan in the, within their own right, but Frank's deserved the shot at, if, if not a Premier League club, at the very least, you could see him playing for a Bayern Munich or possibly even a Real Madrid or a Barcelona who have also been linked with him. So to hear his name being banded about within the same sentence as Aston Villa did initially come at quite a surprise, Dan, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate. Uh, but I, I think it speaks for uh, it speaks for the vision of the club. Um, it, this deal does feel like whoever does land this guy's signature is getting the deal of the summer. Uh, I would go that far because it's going to be for free. It's going to be for free. You know, he he joined AC Milan in in 2017, um, initially on loan, um, but. It, it doesn't look like he, he wants to pen a new deal. It's getting pretty late in the day in terms of that. You know, as I said, it does expire this summer. So he's in the very final months of that deal now. Negation, negotiations sorry, never really made much ground, which is interesting, you know, because AC Milan are really on an upwards trajectory right now. And I think they're, tro- they're quite an attractive club. I think, you know, he's been there a long time. He's overseen a lot. You know, they would be top of the Serie A barring some, you know, late Fabian Marie's dramatics the other day that we sat top at the time of this recording. So 
it's not like he's leaving the AC Milan of old, who were like seventh or eighth in this area, battling it out in the Europa League. Like, you know, these guys are in the Champions League, um, not for very long, unfortunately, at the hands of Liverpool. But, you know, they, they're, they're getting back to where they once were. So I think it's interesting that he's looking to leave on a free. But, you know, he has done his due diligence there. He's done a lot of work. So I, I, I can understand why he wants to move on. Um, but, yeah, mate, you only have to look at, you know, how much he's come on in this time to see what he could be in, you know, compared to what he already is in, in two or three years, wherever he goes on, on a free transfer. And as you say, Barcelona do look like the front runners right now um, are going to be landing the deal of the summer. And I, I think even to be in this conversation, and it seems like we've put a pretty serious proposition to him uh, is, is just exciting in itself, mate. It is. And I find it really interesting because like this profile of player, uh, Atalanta, where he was at before, they do such a good job of like scouting these kind of players, um, and of course, you know, kind of made a name for himself at Milan, especially on that loan spell. But uh, guys, I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you hadn't heard of Frank Kessier, if you'd heard the name and not seen too much about him. So you know, that is why we're here. We're here to inform you about him. And honestly, you know, I think you'll hear a lot of stuff about him playing as a six, you know, in that sort of double pivot role, the 4-2-3-1 that we've seen Milan utilise now for a couple of seasons. He isn't a six, right? That, that's the, f- the most important thing to get out of the way first. Frank Kessier is not sitting in front of the back four and protecting him. He is an eight. He is the epitome of box-to-box now. Here is a heat map just to show you where about this guy is. He's here, he's there, he is absolutely everywhere. Plenty of red in the middle of that pitch. You can see there's touches in the opposition's penalty box and in his own as well, which, you know, again, is really important. I think if you are going to play in that number eight position, you have to be able to cover every single blade of grass on the pitch. That's really important for the likes of John McGinn and Jacob Ramsey, who are operating that position right now for Villa. And ultimately... This is just a, a, a remarkable upgrade on what Villa have at the moment. And, you know, it kind of begs the question. Uh, I, I thought I'd, I'd bring up this conversation that I was having, because uh, I, I forgot to mention on uh, on the last podcast, uh, I was actually sat next to Dom, uh, Dom Hill at Brighton and we, we had a great chat um, about just Villa and everything, of course. Um, so it was nice to see you, Dom. Um, but, you know, we were talking about the sort of sentimentality I feel like we hop, we we linger on to for for too long. You know, we 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 go. Oh, we can't have this player because we've got McGinn. And you know, I think we did touch on this last week, Dan, in in kind of having to be brutal with with players and 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 assess where they're playing and how they're playing because John McGinn is is not a six. You know, he isn't. He's he's not even an eight, is he? Really, he's a ten. He is the most unorthodox ten going. But that is where you see the best output from John. Um, and, you know, I, I, I bring the sentimentality up because Fran Kessier has the potential to be one of the greatest midfielders in terms of profile that this club could have ever even had a conversation about bringing through the door, right, you know, at the level he's walking in at. Um, and Villa just have to be cut for it. And with it being a free transfer, you know, it almost seems like, so ridiculously stupid to 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 not make a serious attempt at signing this guy. Yeah, I think I think you're right, mate. And you know, uh, it was it was one of those where um, this conversation, look, like, it's the only problem with the Coutinho deal, and there is only one problem with it, is that it means that every time we feel like we're not going to sign a player, I'm going to reference that deal because you can go back, guys. And um, if you ever if you ever do a laugh, please do go back and watch the transfer rumor mill where Dan and I discussed the potential of signing Coutinho, <laughs> and it sounds a bit like you know we're we're in dreamland, mate. It's like yeah, it was not going to happen, but it's really yeah. fun to talk about the idea of Coutinho joining the Villa, and, and now here we are, we get to watch him week in week out. So it, it feels like at this point that that is a real look. I'm not sitting here and saying that I think this is going to happen. But I think what that signing does is it really puts Villa on the map across continental Europe in terms of like, oh, wow, like players that like are, are playing in these kind of leagues. It's like, oh, wow, Felipe Coutinho has gone there. And it is it, that is a deal that I think even in that aspect, in terms of convincing future players to to make that switch, to leave, you know, 
Coutinho is a good player that left Barcelona, the club where Kessier wants to go to, to come to Villa. So it's like, this is something that I think we can really use as sort of psychological leverage in, in future deals because we convince the player of that nature at such a pivotal point in his career to make that switch to B6. And look, as I say, I, you know, it's very difficult once the romance of Raudjard and, and Barcelona, who, you know, despite whatever, in, in terms of profiles, in terms, in terms of current form or whatever, they're still the number one, number two clubs in the world, pick your order. And once the romance of that engulfs a player and, and you become swept up in the idea of walking out every week at the new Camp or the Bernabeu, it's very, very difficult to say, hey, no, no. Try Aston, mate. You, you, you really <laughs> like it here. That is, that's a very difficult conversation to have and you have to be very persuasive. But there, there are different pros and, and cons to, to the respective moves. But I think one of the pros of coming to Villa is that you get to be the main man. It's like, realistically, if, if you go to Barcelona, yeah, they're obviously, you know, you're going to play a lot of time. But it hasn't worked for a lot of players. Um and I think that will be something that, you know, you're not going to play every week. There's no guarantee it will work. It's, you know, they have got a lot of players in those positions which they want to bring through. They want to nurture the likes of Gabby and those, those kind of players. So, yeah, there's pros and cons. But as I said, once that romance gets around a player, mate, it, it's hard to shift their eyes elsewhere. It is. But, like, at the end of the day, all we can do is is get excited about this for no reason and inform you guys about the player that Frank is now I, you know I'm looking at the statistics that I've got written down right now I can't lie the numbers are not they're not groundbreaking they're not but like I'm I'm trying to th- I, I I can't think off the top of my head Dan of a player that I can compare this guy to and 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 do both players justice um but what what I like about Frank is in so in the double pivot system that AC Milan play, they play this four two three one. He isn't the, the the sole man responsible for for you know the, the defensive actions in the team, and and that is shown in the numbers. You know he's averaging you know one point eight blocks per ninety, one point eight interceptions, just over two tackles per ninety, um, which you know. You compare that to other midfielders; they're not fantastic statistics. But again, that isn't necessarily his 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 role, his entire job that he should be playing. Now, his midfield partner, more often than not, has been Ismail Benaksa. I think I've pronounced that right. Um, who is undoubtedly the more defensive-minded uh, player out of the pair. And you know, dare I say it? You know, AC Milan have a bit of a Villa just got relegated. Um, you know, Roberto Di Matteo, five attacking players on the pitch at the same time type of vibe. And like, I fuck with it. I can't lie. Um, and just adding Kessie into that, it really, you know, it it it, it complements what is an incredibly dynamic whilst also experienced AC Milan attack when you've got players like Rafael Leao, uh, Olivier Giroud. Um, Alec- um, I was about to say Alexis Sanchez. I'm getting my Milan's confused. Um, but no, of, of course you've got Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, you know the, the the list of attackers is, is endless, and the attacking combinations. Um, Junior Macias as well. What a season he's had. Um, Kessie, you know, a stat that has really intrigued me, and is something that you get when you watch him. Um, he's averaging two point six five touches in the attacking penalty area, Dan. Now, you know, that to me, it, it, it tells me whilst he's not necessarily always going to be involved in the build-up of play, he isn't going to be the midfielder who's, you know, making 10 tackles a game. And, and that's fine because that's extremely hard to find. You're going to see him come up with with the goods towards the end of the pitch. And we saw it last season, 18 goals last season. 10 of them were penalties, albeit. Um, but, you know, having that kind of an output as a midfielder is completely mad and... We've lost a, a penalty taker in Anwar El Ghazi, uh, who's obviously gone to Everton, um, and you know the progressive ca- the progressive passes averaging three point nine, progressive carries four point seven. Again, you know these numbers aren't astounding. Eighty eight percent pass completion, which is exactly where I expect it to be for any player that Villa are looking to sign. I don't want it any lower than that. Um, but having him in and around that sort of attacking penalty area. Um, and just adding another dimension to the attack, which is you know late runs into the box, 
Villa just like Villa don't have that, and that is that is a uh, unquantifiable attribute that like we just haven't seen at Villa for so long. Midfield runners arriving late in the bar, like you know, you think Frank Lampard, you think Steven Gerrard, you think Yaya Torre, like. The list is endless, and Villa have never had one like as in my lifetime, as far as I'm aware, or at least a good one. Um, yeah, so mate. you know that yeah. that really that that's something that impresses me about Kessie Adam. Yeah, one hundred percent, mate. You know, we're talking like upper echelons, like top one percent in the top five leagues um, for those t- touches in the attacking penalty area. He's in the top sixteen percentile for midfielders uh, for that pass accuracy, which you referenced as well, Danny Boy. So. This is a this is a move that I think it's you know he would want a lot of reassurance. I actually don't think AC Milan are going to be too cut up about this um, because they have players like Sandro Tonali who who they're big on in terms of his future. Um, Tiamue Baka, Bakayoko as well, remember him? Yeah, wow. Um, is is on their on their books as well. So they have players that can come in and and cover that position. They're not. You know, this isn't going to leave a gaping hole in that team. Um, but I think that attacking output is something that they'll miss. I, I do. You know, he's he's in a position that um, is not easy, as you can tell from those percentiles, mate. Not easy to try and replicate. But, you know, to be fair, I mean, I'm sorry to, um, you know, if anyone's got any Arsenal allegiances, if we have any Arsenal listeners, I doubt it. But Ivan Gazidis is doing brilliantly at AC Milan. Yeah. The recruitment and, and the strategy that he is unfolding at that club is really, really quite remarkable. This really feels like the first genuine mistake I can feel AC Milan making in a long, long time. Obviously, you know, like some Maldini have gone upstairs and they've really helped to, to steady that ship and get it on site. And this is the first L I can see him taking in a good few years. And it was a mess previously. It, it was, was an absolute mess. Before this, before they came in, I just imagine the Milan board meetings, everyone sort of sat around. It's like, right, guys, we're really going downhill. You know, this is the side that should be competing for Champions League. We're slipping down. The, you know, we're, we're in the doldrums of Serie A. Has anyone got an idea? And there's just a squeaky voice at the other end of the board. We're like, has anyone got Solly Montari's number? <laughs> or like, should we just get Kevin, Kevin Prince Boateng on loan for like oh, the 10th God. time? Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's one of those where these guys are really well equipped to deal with it. But that attacking output is, is going to be something they'll miss, mate. Absolutely. And it is something that Villa have to look at if they are, you know, serious in in making, you know, drastic progress from what is is going to happen this season, and you know, I think I, I don't, to be honest, I think Villa could sign any midfielder, and I, and I would hope at least that Stephen Gerrard will be able to make them better. I think the jury is still out on a few of our midfielders at the club, to be quite honest, but um, I I don't doubt, you know, if if a player's been brought in and, and Stevie's had the final say on that, then. He sees something in them that he can he can Im- improve and develop and and you know this is a player who transfer markets have value down at like forty five million euros who's walking for free now you know as you as you alluded to earlier mate his decision uh, you know whilst for us may seem uh, you know we, why not come to the villa um, but you know I think I think Villa from from what's been reported Dan are offering more money they're offering more game time. Uh, yeah, of course, not as a prestige establishment as Barcelona, but you know we've seen the likes of Adama Traore take fifteen grand a week to go and play for their boyhood club. Um, so we can't underestimate the 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 pulling power of the biggest club in the world, that is Barcelona, um, and 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 Xavi as well, because I think a lot of players will want to play for him. But you know, by that same token, Stevie G, he's at the wheel. Um, and and hopefully this is one that you know we can get talking about in the summer, Dan. I'm sure it won't go away. Um, it sounds like from Milan's end as well that that Frank is is set to make a decision soon, uh, but I can't imagine that that's going to be entirely public at this stage. Um, so if anything does change on that, we will keep you guys updated. But again, you know, one final thing: it's important to note Adidas athlete. Come on, the Sef. Cut the check, cut the check. Let's get this guy some 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 money. Let's get let's get him a nice payday, because um, you know again that is an avenue that that we have to and we can exploit. So I don't see why not. Um, but I think it, it's a resounding 
like 10 out of 10 uh, transfer from, from us here, Dan, isn't it? This is a guy who we absolutely would love to see Don in a glaring blue come next season. Oh, 100%, mate. 100%. 100%. But guys, if you guys have seen Frank Kessier, if you haven't, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, I know Michael Heaney being our resident Italian listener. I'm sure you will have a lot to say about him, mate. So I'm looking forward to your comment. Um, and subscribe for more content if you guys uh, haven't already. You know, the subscribers have slowed down a bit, but the content is not. Uh, and also make sure you download OneFootball using the top link in the description. Up the villa.